The horizontal boring mill can perform a variety of operations during one setting of the workpiece, such as drilling, tapping, boring, and reaming. Here, a set of holes is being drilled and tapped. Two of the three holes are finished, and the machine will be set to drill and tap the third. To locate this hole and determine the dimensions, consult the work drawing. This view of the work drawing shows the holes to be drilled and tapped. These two holes are finished. The same machining operations must be performed to finish this hole. The hole must be drilled with a 33 drill. The hole is to be an inch and a half deep. Tap with a 5 8 11 NC tap. The first operation is to locate the table so the workpiece will be in position for drilling the hole. With the work in position, feed the drill by hand. Determine the depth of the hole by measuring the distance between the face of the workpiece and the spindle. Drill to the depth specified in the work drawing, an inch and a half. When the hole has been drilled to depth, remove the drill. Now install a quick change chuck in the spindle. This chuck is used to hold both the counter bore and the tap. Tighten the counter bore in the chuck. Remove only enough metal to clean up the face of the hole. Remove the counter bore from the chuck. The tap is mounted in a friction sleeve. Shift the back gear lever to the slow speed range. Use cutting oil on the tap. Start the tap in the hole with a quick motion turnstile. Once the tap has been started, follow it with the turnstile to prevent stripping the threads. Reverse the spindle when the hole has been tapped to depth. Be sure to lead the tap out of the hole with the turnstile to avoid damaging the thread. Now the table is moved into position for line boring the top set of holes. Adjust the table to the end measures so that the dial indicator reads zero. Consult the work drawing to determine the dimensions. This view shows the top holes which are to be bored in line. These holes will be bored with a stub boring bar because the casting is open only at one end. The finished diameter of this hole is 3.6708 with a tolerance of plus one half thousand. The finished diameter of this hole is 3.1240 also with a tolerance of plus one half thousand. This hole is counterboard three and one half inches in diameter. And to twelve and five sixteenths inches from the outer face. The outer hole is core. Measure the diameter of the cord hole 
to determine the amount of stock to be removed. The rub hole is three inches in diameter, which means it will be enlarged five eighths of an inch. A core drill should be used here because the core drill has several flutes and will cut truer to center than a standard twist drill. Mount the core drill in the spindle. Set the speed to cut about 80 or 85 RPM. Set the feed to 12 thousandths per revolution. Start the core drill into the work. Beat it by hand until a full cut is started. The core drill roughs the hole, leaving about an eighth of an inch for boring. Run the saddle out so the core drill can be removed from the spindle. Use a cloth when removing tools which may be hot. Use a stub boring bar for roughing the hole. A two and a quarter inch bar will give rigid support to the cutting tool and allow sufficient clearance for chip. To set the tool for a trial cut, measure the diameter of the boring bar to determine the radius. In this case, it is about an inch and an eighth. Set the cutter out 11 sixteenths, which will give a total cutting diameter of about three and five eighths for a trial cut. Because of the lighter cut, the speed can be increased and the feed reduced. Traverse the saddle to bring the work into position for the trial cut. In making the trial cut, feed the tool by hand. Feed the tool far enough so that a measurement can be taken. Caliper the hole. The diameter of the hole is 3.632, which is 39 thousandths undersized. The tool can be set out a few thousands, so that not more than 25 thousandths will be left for finishing. Loosen the set screw and tap the tool out lightly. Now another trial cut is taken. Measure the cut.
the diameter of the trial cut should be about 3.648, which allows 22 thousandths for finishing. The tool is now set for the rough cut. Start the tool into the work by hand, then engage the automatic feed to complete the cut. When boring short distances, feed the spindle rather than the saddle. This is more convenient and spindle deflection will not affect the accuracy of this cut. When the roughing cut is finished, clear the tool and run the work back so that the boring bar can be removed. Since this is a production job, the tool can be left in the bar so that it will not need resetting for the next piece. To finish bore the hole, another stub boring bar is used. In this bar, the tool has been preset to finish size. Even though a tool is preset, it is good practice to take a trial cut to see that the tool is cutting to size. Feed the trial cut by hand, machine deep enough to take a measurement. An inside micrometer can be used to check the finished hole. The finished diameter is 3.6708. On this cut, about 3,000 should be left for reaming. Having checked to see that the tool is cutting to size, take the finishing cut. This hole can be finished immediately following the roughing cut because this is the last hole to be machined in this face of the workpiece. All of the other holes on the face have been rough bored so that strains in the metal have been relieved. Clear the workpiece by moving the saddle so the boring bar can be removed. The inside hole must be started with a twist drill because the hole has not been cored. The speed and feed are increased for drilling. Here an inch and a half drill is used to open the hole since it can be enlarged with a core drill. The core drill enlarges the hole to rough boring size quickly. After core drilling, the hole must be rough bored and counter bored. Then a finish boring tool sizes the hole to within a few thousandths of the specified diameter. A reamer will be used to finish the hole to final size.
Several types of reamers are used to size holes. Here, an expansion reamer is used to finish the inside hole. Reduce the spindle speed for reaming. Feed the reamer through the hole by hand. Reaming gives better finish than boring and sizes a hole quickly and accurately. Clear the tool with the spindle running to avoid marking the work. Use a plug gauge to check the hole. The hole is to size. Remove the reamer from the spindle. Select a reamer for finishing the outer hole. A block type reamer is used for final finishing this hole. It is mounted in a bar which is held in the spindle. The reamer fits into a slot in the bar. It is held in place by a locating screw. The cut is started with the screw tight. Move the saddle in to start the cut. Starting the cut with the reamer tight provides a pilot hole. Clear the reamer and stop the spindle. Now the screw is loosened so that the reamer can follow the pilot hole. Feed the reamer into the work. Floating the reamer through the work allows it to center itself in the hole. This completes machining operations on the top hole. The final operations are to finish bore and ream the three holes which were previously rough bored. A single point tool is mounted in the bar. Each hole is finished separately. The three sets of holes must be finished bored and reamed to complete the job. To review the operations, always follow the lead of the tap with the turnstile. Use a core drill to bring a cord hole to rough boring size quickly. A stub boring bar must be used to machine holes that are open only at one end. Reaming gives better finish than boring and sizes a hole quickly and accurately. 
When all holes have been finished, remove the work and set up for the next piece.